Hi everybody, welcome to the Dave's World YouTube channel. What I wanted to do with this opening footage was basically get everybody up to speed on Project Cruise Missile. I've been working on this car for about a year and a half now. Uh, and you can see here that I developed parts for this car that you could pick up through davescustomparts.com. This is me showing everybody how to install my intercooler kit. And this footage was taken from that video, which there will be links to all the videos in the description. I also developed a big brake kit for the car that utilizes some high carbon rotors and some four piston calipers. Uh, the kit that's on my car would be considered like a race braking system. I also developed another style that's more of a street use, which you can see right here. Uh, uses the rotor that would be in the middle with the slightly larger caliper to the left and I was also comparing the uh, stock Chevy Cruze brakes to my kit. Uh, I also show everybody how to build more power by modifying the what we would call the blow-off valve or the diverter valve. This specific part is called an HPRV uh, and what this does is help you hold more boost on your turbo. I also show uh, the Dave's World wastegate modification. This is a Mamba wastegate that I have modified the spring to my preload to help produce more boost and get as much as you can out of the turbo. I show everybody how to modify the uh, over the top performance shifter to get something a little more like it belongs in the car, a little bit nicer. And then I also have a catch can system that you can get on my website as well. So this is a custom designed system that makes it very easy to be able to drain the catch basin. You guys can see in my preview that I've done a lot of custom things to this car, including the rear spoiler, the exhaust tips, uh, the rims, the brakes. We're going to be doing a clutch delay valve delete. And then in the future, we'll be installing this turbo and then getting it back to the dyno so we can see what kind of power this car makes. Thanks for checking out the Dave's World YouTube channel, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, please hit the uh, like button because uh, YouTube needs to see likes on videos to help a channel grow, and it really helps out the channel. Uh, and I'm glad I could ask you to do something that's actually free. So thank you very much if you do it. Uh, what I'm doing today is I want to talk about the Chevy Cruise Clutch Delay Valve. Now, the Generation 1 and Generation 2 Cruise use basically the same transmission, and they both use a clutch delay valve. The clutch delay valve limits the disengagement of your clutch whenever you let up on the clutch pedal. So even if you let up on it fast or slow, it basically forces the clutch to kind of disengage at the same speed. What happens is your shifter grinds if you're moving too fast, and a lot of guys don't like that. So what they do is remove the clutch delay valve. On the second generation cruise, there's not a lot of information out there on how to do it, but there is a way to do it. So my car actually has a different kind of problem. I have a problem with the clutch delay valve actually not working at all, and I think something broke, and it's actually limiting my uh, disengagement issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to remove the clutch delay valve while installing my new linkage, and also show you how to install and disassemble the existing linkage so you can get to that clutch delay valve. So first things first, let me show you the parts that I picked up. So this is the actual clutch delay valve. This is down on the transmission and this is an accumulator and the actual linkage. Now this is a little thinner than the first generation uh, clutch linkage. I actually don't like how small this is. I wish it was a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger because it would actually change the pedal feel, but whatever, this is what they have in the car. What I'm gonna do is let's pop the hood and we'll figure out where this is hiding. It's pretty much down by the transmission. It's basically in the same spot on both the generation one and the generation two crews. They basically look almost the same. Uh, this is a little bit different and it doesn't have its own reservoir. It actually gets its uh, hydraulics from the brake reservoir, I believe. So let's get the hood open and we'll figure out where everything is. Okay, so the clutch linkage is down here by the transmission, behind the intercooler pipe, behind the ECM. And I think this is a coolant hose. And then it travels pretty much up in this area behind this reservoir. So we have to get all of these parts off and out of the way. I have had this ECM removed before, which is probably easier than getting the uh, intercooler pipe off. So for starters, let's at least get this out of the way and I'll try and get the coolant reservoir out of the way as well. So you know, if you talk to a General Motors technician, they'll tell you to make sure you disengage the battery before you do that.
Okay, I want to show you guys where we're working. Right here is the accumulator, which attaches to the actuator, which is the rod that the clutch pedal moves. It feeds the actuator, feeds the accumulator, and then runs down the line to the CDV before it gets to the slave cylinder. So we have to remove this clip up here and be able to pop this off in order to swap this out. So it's a little bit of a tight squeeze. I'm not sure if I can get it on camera, but I'll try. Okay, now we need to, uh, we need to get the uh, clutch delay valve out. Okay, same thing as before. You want to work the little clip out carefully because if you lose it actually I'm not even sure it comes all the way out which is nice because uh, the one up by the clutch pedal stayed in and didn't get lost which is very helpful Nice. Very nice. All right, so as it sits right now, this entire linkage, unless there's a clip holding it, should come out. Let me move you guys out of the way for a minute. All right, so there's still a lot of stuff in the way, and I can see the linkage. Let me move the light and just do it by feel. I can see the linkage, and it has a couple clips holding it that you have to get by feel. All right, actually, if you go right in front of the ABS module, the clip is right there. You could just grab it by hand. I didn't realize that at first. That's good. <clears throat> just be careful because I pretty much get got brake fluid everywhere. Okay, now the orifice that controls the clutch delay valve is simply just a restrictor. If you look down inside, it's right here. I think it might be easier just to drill it out. Let me try that. have to do is clean everything but I just completely drilled the orifice out so the new the new delay valve actually doesn't have that in it so I wonder if that's a redesign by General Motors I guess we'll find out when we take this for a road test but I think that's easier just drill it out and then clean it out and now the now you don't have to worry about the clutch delay valve anymore it's just quick and easy and I used a let's see I don't know what drill bit this is, but it's smaller than quarter of an inch. It looks like about a four millimeter. It's like a four millimeter drill bit. a vacuum bleeder exactly like what I would do if I were bleeding brakes. It's pretty much the same thing in theory. Okay, so what I had to do once I put the new valve in and the linkage is there's completely zero fluid in the system. I used the vacuum bleeder to pull the air out as much as I could and then every time I push down on the pedal, the pedal would just shoot to the floor and get stuck. There's a spring that helps the pedal down and up. What I found the easiest thing to do is push the pedal halfway before the spring helps you. 
and then back up again. Do it like 30 times, and then you'll notice when you push towards the spring, the spring won't pull the pedal anymore. The clutch actually starts to feel normal. And then you probably want to push it a total of about 100 to 150 times. What I'm going to do is let's put the car all back together, and I want to take this on a road test to see what happens when we drive it now. Okay, so I wanted to end this video off a little bit different uh, from what I normally do. So usually what I do is I'll drive the car and I'll talk about my impressions while driving. This time around, I'm just going to play some footage of me driving the car and I want to talk about my impressions on a more personal level. Doing a clutch delay valve delete is something that I think you should really think about doing. The clutch delay valve is in this car for a reason. It sort of protects the transmission. Now I'm into mods, I love modifying cars. But something that's gonna protect the car, sometimes you don't wanna remove it. Where, you're probably gonna ask yourself, where does it protect the car? This is how it protects the car. It stops you from shock loading your transmission. Shock loading is basically, if you let up on the clutch too quick, like, like basically, let's say you wanna do a burnout right now. You put the car in first gear, you rev the engine real high, you let up on the clutch as hard as you can, get the wheels spinning, and that's how you get a burnout going. That's a shock load to a transmission. But when you drive every day, if you don't have a clutch delay valve in place, you're actually shock loading the transmission almost on a daily basis, and you can do it unconsciously. So what it does is it actually slows down the release of the clutch. So when you push the clutch down, you know, you have a lot more pressure than when you release. So the clutch disengages nice and easy, but when you let up on the clutch, it slowly re-engages the clutch. And that is keeping you from beating up the transmission. And what it's also doing is sort of wearing the clutch out a little bit more than it should. And that feeling is what a lot of like racers and people who want performance are after because they want to be able to to basically feel the car, you know, knock into their back or basically nudge them harder and they want to be able to shift faster and I get that. So if you're going to do this modification to your car, just know what's going to be happening with the car when you do it. Now I showed how I was doing the clutch delay valve delete because I was in the middle of actually doing other modifications to my car. I was just curious how you would do it on this car because there was literally no information online. And the information that I found online was actually incorrect. What's been happening is a lot of people are basically confusing the Generation 1 cruise with the Generation 2 cruise. And some of the information doesn't pertain to the Generation 2 cruise, even though it's supposed to, because they did a lot of design changes due to COVID. So, the pipe that I have on my car, that actual elbow, comes with no clutch delay valve in it. Uh, I'm going to display the part number on the bottom of the screen so you guys know which one to get. When you saw me drilling the hole through the one that I had, it had the clutch delay valve in it. I drilled the hole out, so basically what I did was create that same part from my factory part. It's a free modification. The problem is now I can't put the clutch delay valve back in. That's one of the things I don't like about drilling it out, but it's really the only way you can do it. However, if you go get this part, then you can just swap out the elbow and you'll be able to have no clutch delay valve. You won't have any problems with the car, and if there's something that you don't like about it, you could always go back and you're not destroying an original part. What I ended up doing was I changed the whole accumulator, which you saw in the video. I changed the elbow, which you saw in the video. I didn't quite like how it was driving, so I ended up putting an actual Generation 1 Cruise clutch delay valve in place. So I have the elbow, which is the new part, with the clutch delay valve from the Gen 1 added to the system. Now that, for me, was actually the best pedal feel out of everything. Basically, the Generation 2 clutch delay valve, it isn't as good as the Generation 1. And I know there's reasons to take it out. Like if you're a drag racer, get rid of it, who cares? But if you're somebody who drives a car every day and you think the clutch delay valve might be a problem, it's possibly because something else could be wrong with your car. In my car, the clutch delay valve was messed up and it didn't seem like it was working at all, but it was also restricting the pedal. So that's why I didn't care about messing stuff up on the car. Uh, but the new setup I have actually feels great. So I want to let you guys know that that's what I did with my car. The shifting on my car is a lot better and I just want you guys to be careful when you're modifying stuff because just know when you read things online, you're just reading stuff that 
people are getting you to click on it sometimes just to be there and not so much the information you need to be reading. I also wanted to say uh, thank you very much to everybody who's on my membership. The membership goes a long way in my channel. It's helping me out tremendously. You guys are all amazing. Uh, anybody who has the membership email that's contacted me, you guys are great. I love talking to you. I really appreciate it. That's why I put that email out there. And it's not the Brembo Dave one. People who are in the membership have a completely different email they get access to, which you guys talk to me directly, especially if you need help with your cruise, you know, can help diagnose. Uh, your car with you and I appreciate you putting your trust in me. So thanks again everybody and if you need anything feel free to ask and have a very nice day.